Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. We're so grateful that you are a part of this service. Today is Sunday, September 20th, 2020, and we've been on the study following Jesus. I want to welcome you. Thank you for being a part of this service. I pray that God will minister to all of us. Once again, welcome. Welcome indeed. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. We give God all the praise. We thank him for the incredible opportunity of being a part of this service. We give him all the honor and all the glory. We welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will encourage you to, to kindly click on the share button and, uh, and share the link. Once again, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. As you join from wherever you are, we, we welcome you to this great Sunday. Um, it's, I look forward to the service and to this session. We are still continuing on our theme for September, following Jesus. And we're going to be commencing in a moment. But I want to give you the opportunity to be able to click the share button and to share the link with friends and family. And, and please share your thoughts, share your experiences, and, and, and feel free to send any questions. I've been getting commitments or um, comments from people here and there, and we deeply appreciate that. And we thank you once again for joining. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's an exciting day. This is the day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. You, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We thank you for today. This is the day you've made. We are very excited that you're able to join us. Um, please kindly click on the share button and share the link. We will be praying. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Um, it's a great day. It's the day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. We are continuing with our September series, Following Jesus. And we're going to be going just dissecting this and and trying to understand it more and and being able to maximize the time we have well thank you well, thank you very much god bless you i will be praying in a moment and um, i encourage you to click on the share button and share the link and invite friends invite family be, be if you want to host a watch party please go ahead and do that and I invite you, if you have met previous editions or sessions, to please visit um, the YouTube channel where we are storing these messages. Of course, many of them are still on Facebook. You can please download them, listen to them. They are building one upon another. And we are grateful to God for the gift of life and the, the workings of of the purposes of God's kingdom and for God making it possible that we are alive on a day like this. We, we take nothing for granted. We thank him for, for preserving our lives, for guiding us, for teaching us, for leading us, and for indeed for helping us in every sense of the word. Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I welcome you. I will be praying in a moment. I'll be praying in a moment. I encourage you to click on the share button and, and to kindly share your link. Um, invite friends, invite family, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, join the community. Let's see what God is capable of doing with all of our lives. Just this one life to live. Let us make the most of the time that God has allotted to us. Let's make the most of the opportunity that God has given to us in this life to run the race that God has set before us and to maximize every moment by maximizing our time. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we adore you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord. We take nothing for granted. We thank you for making this day possible. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for friends. We thank you for well-wishers. We thank you for as many as are participating in this service. We pray for them, wherever they may be. We thank you for individuals, for families, for, for, for communities, Father, for entities, wherever they may be listening. We thank you for a listening ear. We thank you for enlightening our eyes. Father, open the eyes of our understanding that we'll be able to behold wondrous strength out of your law. We thank you for clarity of scripture. Father, reveal your scripture to us. Father, unpack your scripture to us. Father, 
unveil your scripture. Father, help us to understand. Father, let the same unction that help men of old, holy men of old, who wrote the scriptures, let the same unction help us to comprehend it. There is an anointing that was upon them to communicate scripture, to write scripture, document scripture. Father, there is an anointing to be able to understand scripture. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for speaking to us in the language we each of us can understand. Father, remove from us every, every type of confusion. Let there be clarity of thought. Let there be clarity of the message that you want to pass across to us this very day. We thank you, Lord. We welcome the person of the Holy Spirit. We pray that he would illuminate the eyes of our understanding. Thank you for exceeding all of our expectations. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Once again, I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. We've been on the study following Jesus. And um, it's since September 2020, this is our third edition on that study. And we have had previous sessions and you feel free to go to the Facebook page and download that message or listen to the message or subscribe to the YouTube channel and keep listening because I believe that these messages are timeless and they will help us in our work with God. We are looking today, what we want to do is to take a, what I may call a quick summary of what we have studied so far and to make sure that everything is on course. Um, in, in looking at the subject following Jesus, I'm going to be looking at the following aspects of it. We're going to break it down to bring everything to a summary, what we have studied so far. The first is, what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does that mean? What did it mean? And what does it mean? Number two is, what is the purpose when Jesus said to follow him? What purpose was Jesus communicating? What is the purpose in following Jesus? The third is, what is the prize? Of following Jesus and what is the process of following Jesus and then the, uh, to make that clearer we look at the how which is a part of that process but the exact way Jesus was calling us to follow him and finally today we will consider the benefits of following Jesus I don't know if we'll be able to cover all this I'm going to take my time I'm not going to rush it but at the same time I will be encouraging you to be a part of this service. So let's 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 open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to read from verse 17. Matthew 14. Matthew 14 from verse 17. I will be reading both from the King James Version and then sometimes I'll read from the New Living Translation. Matthew 14. Join me. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. God bless you. Matthew chapter, 14, Matthew, the chapter 14. I'm reading from verse number 17. This is the New Living Translation first. And then maybe we'll take a look at the King James Version. It says, From then on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then in verse 18, one day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, throwing a net into the water. For the fish for a living, Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish for men. Come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish for men. Let's look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Right, we're going to, I'm also reading from the New King James Version. I will read from verse 4. I'm looking for, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, rather. Luke chapter 5 from verse 4. When he had finished speaking, this is a this is very interesting because this is um, a different account of the same event. This is Luke's account of what we are reading in Matthew. And you know, there are some things that we need to observe there. But let me let me let me back let me back up to verse 1 of Luke chapter 5. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were wish washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push out into the water. So he sat in the boat and tore the cross from there. In verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, We have worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. And a shout for help brought, brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish on the, verge, on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. 
am such a sinful man, for he was all struck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you shall be fishing for men. And as soon as they landed, they left everything, Simon, Peter, and his partner, and John and James, the sons of Zebedee, they left everything and followed Jesus. So this call from Jesus, or this statement from Jesus, don't be afraid, from now on you shall be fishing for men. Um, Peter took it as a call of God, and the Bible tells us that clearly that they left everything and that they followed Jesus. Just a moment. They left everything and they followed Jesus. So I will go back to Matthew and read the same passage. Let me read Luke chapter 5 from, from the King James Version of the Bible, just to give us a bit of a background. King James Version, Luke chapter 5, and I will read from verse 1 again, Luke chapter 5 from verse 1, um, the King James Version. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genazareth and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when they are left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nest for drought. And Simon answered said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had left, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they both they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me from a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drop of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not from henceforth, thou shalt catch men. Praise the Lord. So let's let's I want us to take a look. Um, at Matthew 19, Matthew 19, the King James Version, before I go back to Matthew chapter 4, King James Version, and then we'll start to roll from there. Matthew 19, I want to read, I want to read from Matthew 19, not Matthew 19, let's, let's, no, 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 not Matthew 19, I apologize for that, this, um, it's Matthew 16, let's, 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 let's open our Bibles to Matthew 16. Let me make sure that I have the right passage. Matthew, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter, Matthew. Okay, it's the right passage. Matthew chapter nineteen from verse sixteen. Let's let's take a look there. Matthew nineteen. Let's go back there. Matthew. Thank you very much. Nineteen. Let's see whether we have the right passage here from verse sixteen. Okay, very correct, very good. Thank you very much. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, But which Jesus said, he said unto him, Which? Which of the commandments, in other words, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What like I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go, sell that that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And come and follow me. We're looking at following Jesus. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 4 and read from verse 17 in the King James Version. And then we'll go back to our main text, our main or to the content of our service today. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. I'm, I'm reading, I'm not reading the King James Version. I read this from the New Living Translation. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. This is Matthew's account of the story we read in Luke chapter 5. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word and the integrity of scriptures. Today, we are looking at various dimensions of following Jesus. I've said we're looking at, number one, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Number two, what is the purpose of following Jesus? What Number three, what is the prize and the process? 
And what and number four is what are the specific ways in which Jesus wanted us to follow him? And the five, if we get there, what are the benefits of following Jesus? So we've looked at Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 19, Luke chapter 5. What does it really mean to follow Jesus from this example? Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Number one, what it means to follow Jesus. Number one is it means to heed the calling voice of God. Jesus said, follow me. He said this to Matthew. He said this to Peter. He said this to James and John. And he said it to the rich young ruler. He said, for the rich young ruler, he said, sell all that you have and follow me. The emphasis today is on following Jesus. He said, follow me. He said to Peter, follow me. He said to James and John, follow me. So the first thing is that the first meaning of what it means to follow Jesus is to heed the calling voice of God to follow him. That's part A. Number two, it means to put our trust in him and make him the most important person in our lives. When Jesus said, follow me, the emphasis is on me. The first emphasis is on follow, follow. To follow means to heed the calling voice of God. Then he says, follow me. When he says, follow me, the next emphasis is on me. It means to put our trust in Jesus and to make him the most important person in our lives. Number three, it means to stop and pause and look up and ask, what would you have me do? We learn this from the story of Paul the Apostle in Acts chapter 19, in Acts chapter 9. In Acts chapter 9, Paul on his way to Paul was on his way to Damascus. And he, as he traveled along, he came to the point where he had a supernatural experience with God. And the voice of God spoke to him and said, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are thou, Lord? He said, I'm the one you're persecuting. It's very difficult for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, Paul, it's very difficult for you to resist the purposes of God. Then Paul looked up, Paul paused, then stopped, then looked up and said, what would you have me do? So when Paul heard the calling voice of God, he paused, he stopped, he looked up. He said, what do you want me to do? To follow Jesus means to stop. It means to stop in the path of your travel and to pause and to look up and to look up to God and say, what would you have me do? Number four, what it means to follow Jesus. It means to adjust our thinking and put Jesus ahead of our culture and life experiences. Jesus says, repent, repent, repent. He says this in Matthew chapter 4, in verse 17. Let's again take a look at that. Matthew chapter 4, in verse 17. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he said to Peter, to James, to John, he said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus says, repent. To, this please means to stop. To stop, adjust your thinking, and put Jesus ahead of your culture, ahead of your life experiences, ahead of all that is happening around you. Number five, it means to answer his call, to follow his call, specific call for our lives. When Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, follow me, and I will make you. He was saying to Peter, I have a call for you. I have an assignment for you, Peter. Follow me. Follow me, Peter. You follow. You follow me, and I will reveal myself unto you that you understand my purpose for your life. What does it mean to follow Jesus? The next thing it means to follow Jesus is that it means to trust Jesus with our future and the specific plan and purpose that Jesus has for our lives. It means to trust Jesus with everything that he has for our lives, to trust him with a specific blueprint that Jesus has for our lives. So let's take a look at that again. In, in, that's number, number seven. Number six, he says, it, in number six, it means to trust Jesus with our future and the blueprint he has for our specific life. Peter, he says, stop, stop, follow me, and I will make you. You follow me, you follow me. What does it, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Number seven, it means to make what matters to Jesus the matter of our lives. All the people that Jesus called in New Testament to follow him, they had to stop. They had to stop. They had to stop and make the things that were important to Jesus to become the central reason why they lived, the central purpose of their lives. So number eight, it means to make catching men the priority of our lives. In Luke chapter 5 verse 10, Jesus said to Peter, he said, from now you shall catch men. And we have to know what does it mean to catch men. So number eight, it means to make catching men the priority of our lives. Jesus said, from now, from henceforth, you shall catch men. Peter was a fisherman and had fishing companions, people that fished with him. And they were, these were mature grown men with families. And they, they spent, they, they, they fished for a living. And Jesus, they had an encounter with Jesus by the lakeside. And Jesus said to them, stop. 
Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. In, in Peter, to Peter speaking, he said, from now, from henceforth, he said, you shall fish for men. And he said to Matthew, the tax collector, from henceforth, you shall catch men. Verse number nine, it means to ignore all the circumstances of our lives and to know that everything Jesus is saying to us will come to pass. He said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. It means to be willing, number, number 11, it means to be willing to come under the tutelage of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He said, he said to Peter, to James, and he said, follow me, follow me, follow me. So in this, as we'll go through this process of saying we're following Jesus, we need to understand this in all its fullness. It means to, to, to follow Jesus means to, to, to follow his, 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 his tutelage and that of the Holy Spirit. Because he said, follow me and I will make you. You follow me, I will make you. You follow me, I'm going to make you. When we start looking at the process, we understand what each of those words mean. But what is the other meaning of that? The, the twelfth meaning, it means that Jesus is saying that I have to become the most important person in your life. You forget about everything else. You focus your, your, focus, your focus on me. Make me the focus of your life. And this is something that is practical for all of us. In a different generation, we live at a time when there's so much of people going on around the world. There are all kinds of things going on. There are all kinds of philosophies. There are growing culture, many ways of interpreting life. People have different ways they're approaching life. There are all kinds of issues coming up. There are interpretation. There are a lot of social upheaval. Um, there are um, new ways of approaching life. There are new behavioral patterns around the world. And, and there are, of course, increased challenges, all kinds of pressure upon men. Some of the pressure is social, some of it is fam family-wise, some of it is, is political, some of it is financial, some of it is just the challenge of living life at such a time as this. And yet, in the midst of this, the calling voice of Jesus is not changing for us. Jesus is saying, you follow me. You make me the priority of your life. You make me the most important person in your life. You come under my tutelage and the tutelage of the Holy Spirit because I will reveal to you what you ought to do with your life. I will guide you all the days of your life. Number 12, what does it mean to follow Jesus? I've mentioned this is where we are. I said to follow Jesus means that in the midst of all that is going on around the world, that this Jesus is asking to become the most significant person in our life and to become the answer to all of the questions that life might be throwing at us. Number 13, to follow Jesus means to follow his instruction, when, even when, it, when his instructions, when it comes from his trusted servants who are also following him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So following Jesus sometimes will mean following the instruction from trusted servants of Jesus Christ who are also following the instruction that Christ has given to us. Because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He said that teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So when we follow the instructions that Jesus gave us, when we follow the commandments that Jesus gave us, the people then the people that so follow, when they give us those instructions, as his trusted servants who are in, who are striving to follow those instructions, by following them, in following those instructions, we're following Jesus Christ. So number, number 14, to follow Jesus means to be busy about his father's business, okay? So we'll look at this in Luke chapter 2, in verse 49, to follow Jesus. Jesus gave us an example. He left us an example that we cannot ignore. Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And he said unto them, this is just been, how is it that you sought me? Were you not aware that I must be about my father's business? This is the King James Version, Luke chapter 2, verse number 49. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business? So to follow Jesus is to follow him to go about the business of his father. What is this business of his father? Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because the Lord was with him. Jesus went about fishing for men, catching men, investing all his life to reveal the purposes of God to men, to change the focus of men from all the things that are distracting, trying to gain the attention of men, to make them focus on the priority of the kingdom of God. So that is number 14. Number 15, to follow Jesus means to trust him to meet every need of our life. To follow Jesus means to follow him to the place of trusting him that Jesus is capable of meeting every need of our life and that we can put our absolute implicit, implicit trust in him. Matthew chapter 6, let's look at verse 8 and verses 32. Matthew chapter 6 verse 8. But 
be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Jesus is teaching his disciples here who have made the commitment to follow him. He's teaching them how to pray. And he says to them, when you come, when you come to the place of prayer, enter into your closet and shut it. He said, do not stand in the public places, in the streets of this life to pray. But when you pray, enter into the privacy of your home, enter into your closet and pray. He said, but when you pray in this verse number eight, he said, do not think that your father in heaven, who is my father, will hear you because of your verbosity. He said, he, has, he knows all things whatsoever you have need of. As you follow me and make your request before God, as you are following me, you can make your request before God. But know this, that my father in heaven knows all things you have need of before you ask him. So to follow Jesus is to have absolute trust that the Father knows all things we have need of and will meet all of us at the very point of our needs. That God is capable of meeting every need in our life. Look at verse 32 in Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading the King James Version. Matthew chapter, chapter 6 verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Again, Jesus is emphasizing that when you follow me, you must trust me that our Father in heaven, my Father in heaven, who is your Father, will meet every need of your life according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So to follow Jesus is to trust him. And in so trusting him, to trust God the Father to meet every need of your life, irrespective of the size of that need, irrespective of the intensity of the need, irrespective of the complexity of the need, irrespective of the challenges around you, to have Absolute faith in God that God will meet you because when you follow him and you hear his call, when he says, I will make you fishers of men and you follow Jesus and in so following Jesus, you follow the father. What Jesus is saying that what it means to follow me is to take your faith away from yourself. Do not have faith in your own faith. Have faith in me and that my father who has sent me will meet you at every point of your need. Number 16, it means to make the commitment never to look back, but to be fully persuaded that he that has called you is faithful. When Jesus said, follow me, Jesus was asking us that we should make the commitment, we should follow, make the commitment to follow him without looking back, without looking back. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 16. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 16, that he, has, he that has put his hand to the plow, and looking back, makes himself unfit for the kingdom of God. So to follow Jesus is to make a no-go-back commitment that you're going to follow him all the days of your life. Follow him to the place where he makes you and makes you to become a fisher of men. And we're going to explain all that, but it means to make no-go-back commitment. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, let's quickly read that, verse 24 from the King James Version. And the Bible says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it or make it to come to pass. Jesus is the one calling us. To follow Jesus means to believe, number 15, to, to number 16, to believe that Jesus is faithful and that he will faithfully help you to follow him till the very end. So to follow Jesus, number 16, means to make the no go back commitment to never look back. And to believe that he that has called us is faithful to make the calling we have received from him to come to pass. Number 17, to follow Jesus means to believe on him that God has said. To follow Jesus means to believe on him, on, to believe on him whom God has said. Let's look at John chapter 6, to follow Jesus. Our topic today is following Jesus. And we are looking at the meaning, what it really means to follow Jesus. So we read John chapter 6. John chapter 6, Father, we thank you, in verse 38 of John chapter 6. Again, I'm reading the King James Version of John chapter 6, verse number 38. Okay? John chapter 6, verse number 38. And, and I'm going to back up and read from 37. All that the Father has given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will not in any wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. 
And Jesus said, all that come unto me, all that follow me, I will not cast out. But I came down from heaven, not to do my own will. So to follow Jesus is to follow him, to do the will of God who sent him. And by so doing, we do the will of God for our lives. Jesus said, I came to do the will of him that's not, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me in John chapter 4, verse 34. And he said, I cannot myself do nothing. As I see my father do, that I do. Because what my father doeth is exactly what I do. So he said, I came not to do my own will. So to follow Jesus is to follow him, to make the will of God, the priority of our life, and to follow him to do the will of God, as his father has sent him. Number 19, to follow Jesus means to shut up the controversy concerning his personality and teachings, and to focus on the reality of his ministry, of his personality, and of his teachings. Let's look at John chapter 5 in verse 18. John chapter 5 verse 18. John chapter 5 verse 18. There, was, there were a lot of controversy about Jesus Christ. All kinds of things were said about him. In following Jesus, our eye has to be on the ball. John chapter 5 verse 18. Therefore, the Jews sought to sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So the Jews sought to kill Jesus. Why did they want to kill Jesus? Because Jesus said, I came from the Father. And they said, that's blasphemy. Who are you? Why did you, why did you heal the man on the Sabbath day? And Jesus said to the man, take up thy bed and go. And when they said, so why are you carrying your bed? Why are you walking on the Sabbath day? He said, I don't know. But the man that told me to take up my bed said, I should carry my, my bed. And he said, who is that? When Jesus came back to the man, he said, Go and sin no more. Excuse me. The Jews said to him, who, who, who is that? And he said it was Jesus. And they said that Jesus is of the devil. That he didn't come from God. In verse 18 specifically, the Jews sought to kill Jesus because he not only broke the Sabbath, but Jesus said to them, my father walked it out in verse 17 and I walk. Because, it, because in verse in verse 19, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Because the, this man had been sick for 38 years and was by a particular pool, the pool of Siloam. And the Bible told us that angels came at different times and, and stirred up the water. And as the water was stirred, whoever got into the water was immediately healed. But in this case, this man said, I have nobody to heal me. And Jesus just proclaimed, just spoke over the man, prophesied over him. He said, go. And be healed. Oh, no, 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 no. He just said to him, take out thy bed and walk. He just spoke to him, take out thy bed and walk. And the man was healed. And then the Pharisees and religious leaders, they saw him. And they said, why are you carrying your bed on the Sabbath day? He said, well, whoever told me to take up my bed, told me to carry my bed. Told me, whoever told me to get up and walk. Whoever healed me, told me to carry my bed and walk. And they said, who is this? He said, I don't know. Then Jesus came back and said, I am Jesus. I'm the one that told you. And the Bible tells us here, in, when you read from verse, the verse, verse, verse 15, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done all these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered, My father walketh hither and I walk. And they sought to kill him because he made himself equal with Jesus. So to follow Jesus means to shut off the controversy concerning his personality, concerning his ministry, concerning his teaching, and Adhere to those teachings despite what men might say about him. Because in following Jesus, there are many people that will not come along. They would, they, they, just like the Pharisees and the religious leaders of Jesus, they were, were thinking of Jesus and said that this man was of the devil. This man cannot be of God. They were prejudging him because they were not of the right heart, of the right spirit, of the right mindset. So we must understand that. There, were, there are many controversial things that people stirred up, and yet Jesus was the Son of God. Was, Jesus was the anointed one, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This was exactly why Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I am? They said, Some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're one of the prophets. And he said to them, But whom do you say that I am? Because I've called you to follow me. And Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Following Jesus means to ignore the controversies and to follow him all the way to the end. Number 20, to follow Jesus means to accept, therefore, his teachings. To accept his teachings as the final arbiter of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man can come unto the Father except by me, except through me. Jesus taught us. He said, for, make, make, making them to observe and to do all the things I've taught you. He gave us the Sermon of the Mount, which we'll review. He taught them many things. To follow Jesus means to adhere, to accept the teachings of Jesus as final and complete and true. Number 21, to follow Jesus means to keep going even when others stop. Let's look at John chapter 6 from verse from verses 67. John chapter 6 from verse 67. We're going to be moving, moving very quickly. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 67. Somebody praise the Lord out there. Following Jesus. In verse 67 of John chapter 6, the Bible said, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered and said unto him, To him shall we go, thou hast the words of eternal life. So what's the context of this? Because the Bible says from that point, some people stopped following Jesus because they said that his teachings were hard. That the things that Jesus was teaching were hard. Let I read. Let, let's read. Let's look at. In verse. In verse 50, 53. Then said Jesus unto them. Very, 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 I say unto you. Except ye eat the flesh of a son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life, and I will make him, I will wake him up or raise him up on the last day. For my flesh, my flesh is meat indeed. He was talking about the, 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 the communion table. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This thing said he in that synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of disciples, when they heard this thing, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in, in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth that offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew that from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given to him of my father. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. And then in verse 67, he said to the twelve, Will you also stop following me? Many stopped following Jesus because they thought his teachings were hard. So what does it mean to follow Jesus? It means to accept Jesus' teachings and to follow him all the way. But it also means never to stop. That irrespective of who stops to follow Jesus, to follow him means to follow him till the very end. So number 21, to follow Jesus means to keep going even when others stop. To follow Jesus means to keep following him when others stop. Now let's go back to the second part. Let's go now to the second part of our study today because of time. What is the purpose in following Jesus? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. What is the purpose? Why does Jesus call us to follow him? Now we've looked at what it means to follow Jesus. In a practical sense, to follow Jesus is to make a no-go-back commitment. To trust Jesus with all of our heart. And to stop and to pause and to ask from him, what would you have me do? To put our complete trust in him, to accept his person, his ministry, his teachings, to accept the, 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 his doctrine as the final arbiter of life and the reason why he came. To follow Jesus means to accept that Jesus is the most important person in our life, that there is nothing Jesus has asked us to do for him that is too big. But then why does Jesus call us to follow him? What is the purpose that Jesus calls us to follow him? What is the purpose in following Jesus Christ? So look at Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 19. Matthew chapter 4. We go back to our key text. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, verse 19. Let's now switch over to the New Living Translation. Matthew 4, verse 19. Somebody praise the Lord. Matthew 4, verse 19. Sorry, Matthew chapter 4, not chapter 19. Praise God. New David, verse 19. Let's get there quickly. So, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fish for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish for men. Follow me, and I'll show you how to fish for men. Follow me, follow me, and I'll show you. Now let's look at Luke chapter 5, verse 10. Let's go back. We've read these passages. Let's look at them for emphasis, and then we'll go jump in again. Luke chapter 5, verse 10. 
Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you shall be fishing for men. Luke chapter 5, verse 10. I'm going to look at that finally from the King James Version of Luke, Luke chapter 5, verse 10 in the King James Version. And it says, As so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So what is the purpose of Jesus calling us to follow him? So let's go back. Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So what does that, what's the purpose of Jesus calling us? He says, follow me, I'll make you. So the first purpose in Jesus calling us to follow him is that he wants to make us. Follow me and I'll make you. Jesus wants to make us. He wants to transform our thinking. He wants to transform our lives that will never be the same. Number two, Jesus wants us to follow him so that in the process we will become like him because his calling becomes our calling and his lifestyle becomes our lifestyle. So that we'll become like him. First one, that he'll make us. Secondly, he'll make us to become like him. Number three, he wants us to represent him and God the Father on earth. He said, follow me, I will make you. Jesus came to fish for men. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of darkness. The same reason he came. He said, as my Father sent me, so send I you. Jesus wants us to represent him and God the Father on earth. Number four, the reason, the purpose of Jesus asking us to follow him is that he wants to teach us how to catch men. To make it the number one priority of our life. Not only is it the meaning, but it's the purpose. He says that from henceforth you shall catch men. The very essence of our life, the purpose for which he's calling us, is that for the rest of our life, we'll be mindful and understand what it means to seek after men. Because he said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Jesus is asking us, what shall we give in exchange for our soul? So Jesus is telling us that the soul of man has the opportunity to either abide with God forever when it's all over on earth or to go into eternal domination. Jesus said that there is nothing a man can give in exchange for his own soul that is equal to the soul of man. So catching men, helping men to reconsider their lives and to make God the focus of their life and to prepare for eternity is the most important work on earth. And Jesus said, the purpose of me asking you to follow me is that I want to teach you. Jesus wants to teach you and I. He wants to teach us how to catch men. That this becomes the driving force of our life. That we spend our life, that whatever we do, whether we eat, whether we work, whether we drink, whatever, whatever we do for a living, that catching men, being able to, to catch men means to point men into the direction of the kingdom of God and make them accept the reality of that kingdom and make it the reason that they live. Okay? The number six is that... Jesus, the purpose of Jesus asking us to follow him is that he wants us to make fishing for men. Not only to teach us how to fish for men, but to make sure that fishing for men is the reason we ourselves live. The reason for our lives. That whatever platform we find ourselves, whatever area of life we find ourselves, whatever our calling, whatever the level of our education, whatever opportunities life presents itself to us, the purpose of Jesus asking us to follow him is that he wants to make us. He wants to make us to be like him. He wants to make us to represent God the Father, represent him. He wants us to catch men. He wants us to, he wants to show us how to catch men. He wants us to make catching of men the priority of our lives. And finally, the purpose of Jesus asking us to follow him is to make us preach the kingdom of God for a living. That whether with our works, with our life, start to preach the kingdom of God. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And it's righteousness for all these things shall be added unto you. And he said, when you pray, pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The heartbeat of Jesus was the kingdom of God. The purpose of following Jesus is that the kingdom of God becomes not only our summer, but the heartbeat of our lives. So finally, in the next few minutes, I, I will just take a few more minutes here. I won't be able to finish this part. What is the prize and the process of following Jesus? The prize and the process. Quickly, very quickly follow me. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, I'll read very quickly verse 28. This could be one of the last verses to read. And it says, but when, verse 28, it says, 
and fear not for them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And are not Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Okay? Let me make sure that I have verse 38. Sorry about that. Matthew 10, verse 38. So let me read from verse 36. And a man's foe shall be there of his own household. Verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Let's look at Luke chapter 14. Maybe we will stop here. Luke chapter 14. Luke 14, verse 26. This is very interesting. Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. I read from the King James Version. As I try to wind up here. Verse 26. If any man come after me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower will not sit down first and count the cross? Let me stop. In verse 27, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Just one more passage for today. Um, Luke chapter 9. A lot of passages. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke 9, 23. Very important passage. This should, could be our last for today. And he said to them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. For whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or be cast away. What is the prize of following Jesus? Number one, whoever will come after me must deny himself. The first is denying yourself. This talks about self-discipline. talks about self-abandonment. It talks about the acknowledging of Jesus over our lives. It talks about not exalting self. It talks about depriving yourself. It talks about living a life of sacrifice. Number two, it says, take up your cross. Take up your cross. To take up your cross. Last week, we defined the cross and said the cross represents anything God will ask you to do for him. Anything God will ask you to do for him that you have the right to say no, but you choose to do so that his kingdom advances. I would like to stop here for today because of our time. Thank you for listening. It's been my pleasure to work with you on uh, today as we continue the subject of following Jesus. My prayer is that God will see us through and help us to move along. What does it mean to follow him? It, makes him make, it means to make him the very priority of our life, to commit all of our lives into his hands. I mean, To make Jesus the most important person in our life. To make Jesus the reason we live. He said, come, I'll make you fishers of men. It means to make catching men, interrogating men, pointing them to the kingdom of God, the priority of our life. It means to preach the gospel of the kingdom. It means to know that Jesus will take care of all of our needs. It means to know that we must adjust our thinking and exalt Jesus, his person, ministry, and teaching above every experience of life and all of our culture. It means to accept the, the priority and the superiority of Jesus Christ over all that life offers to us. It means to trust him implicitly with all of our life. To follow Jesus means to not be afraid of the future, for he that holds the future is with you, and his presence is with us. But I can't go through, I can't go beyond this point today. I want to say thank you for listening. I will be praying with you in a moment. I want to give you an opportunity to support the work of the ministry. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness unto all nations, and then the end must come. All the details are on the screen. And as you choose to support this work, God will multiply your seed soon and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I thank God for the awesome privilege of ministering the word to you. Father, thank you. Thank you for making it possible that we can follow Jesus. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to take a moment and pray for us and pray with us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for clarity. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your grace, the abundance of your grace. 
The Bible says that the grace of God that bringeth salvation appeared unto women, teaching us to abandon all things, to walk away from sin and commit our life to total abandonment in the hands of God. We thank you, Father, for the reality of the gospel of the kingdom. Father, many found it a hard thing when you said they must eat your flesh and drink your blood. But Father, we thank you because, because of the grace of God. He said that he that cometh unto you shall not in any wise cast out. We're praying that you help us. Help us to understand what it truly means to follow you and to take it to practical dimensions that our lives will count in time and eternity. We want to make the most of life. Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. And don't forget to keep sharing the message and feel free to get back and to let us know how life is playing out with you. We take nothing for granted. In Jesus' mighty name. Have a lovely week.